I am Rebecca and these are my reviews and I have another wine subscription box for you. So this one is called First Leaf and it's just, you know, your Joe wine subscription. You sign up, they send you boxes every month. You can also change your settings to be sent every two months or every three months. And of course you can always go into your account to adjust that if you need more or less time. Um, so when I first signed up for this, they had a deal and I believe that I have a referral code that will get you the same deal where you can get three bottles basically for free. You just have to pay shipping and handling. But then when I actually looked on the site, they had another deal running where I could get six bottles for half the price. I think that's what the deal was. But you could also get, they had different deals. So it was like six of their award-winning reds or six of their favorite whites or a mix of reds and whites. Um, and you could get six bottles or you can get 12 bottles. It's very customizable. That way you can get sparkling, rosé, etc. So anyway, what I have here is six bottles of red. So first let me show you what you actually get in the box and then I will have me tasting them in real time as I did throughout the month with my notes and first impressions, etc. so that you guys can get a feel for how I felt about the wines as I was drinking them. Okay, so you open your box and you have this envelope which has these tasting cards in them. So on the back it has like a lovely little photo. This is the back streets of Rome. And then on this side you have all of the notes about the wine. So it has a little blurb about the wine and then you've got the profile, the body, acidity, sweetness, fruit, tannins, some food pairings, and then just your general stats, where it's from, the type of grape, how much it costs, etc. And then it has this section right here that's left blank for your own tasting notes. So as you're drinking you can write it and you know, whatever you thought of it. And then you can also go online and online they will have even more information about the wine as well as a place for you to write how you felt about it. Here's the interesting thing. They either have a thumbs up or a thumbs down. Usually with these things you can give them, you know, three out of five stars. Well, this is either yes, I loved it or no, I hated it, which I thought was a little extreme, but you can also leave notes in there. And I don't know how much they actually read your notes and take that into account when they're choosing your next wines. But I think it's more of a basic, oh, you like big reds. You don't like, I don't know, something else. Anyway, they do have lots of information on here, as well as most of the bottles actually had a blurb on the back of the bottle describing it. And the pictures are quite lovely. You know, they're like postcard-esque, which I thought was, was kind of fun. And then you have this card which tells you top five ways to personalize your first leaf. So you can change the delivery date, rate the wines, swap out your wines. That's another thing. For your next case, they will say, okay, based on your preferences, we're going to send you these wines. And then you can actually go through them and look at all of the information and be like, you know what, that one is rated at a three level sweetness out of five. So maybe I'm gonna swap that for something else. And you're allowed five swaps for per shipment. So you can't just keep swapping them and once you've swapped it, you can't go back. So it's not like you can just browse the wines. It's like, I know I'm not gonna like that, I'm gonna swap it or just leave it. Um, and then you can update your preferences if you want red, white, rosé, sparkling. And you can also just buy the wine a la carte. And then it came with this like newspaper thing. What's inside? And it's like, the whole wine to water and all of these interesting things about what they do and where they get their wine and all of this stuff. I mean, it's quite a lot of information that you get. And then you have your six bottles. And like I said, you can either get six or 12. And for your intro pack, they have a three bottle option. And I did drink all of the bottles over the course of the last, I don't know, month or so. And so right now I'm going to show you me tasting them in time and giving you my thoughts as I drink them. So if you don't care about the individual bottles and my personal opinions, just jump ahead because I think that section is probably like 10 minutes long or something. Okay, so this is my first of my First Leaf wines. This one is the 
Chromatrope Merlot, product of France. And I have to tell you guys, it's actually really, really good. So the description on the back, I think, is very accurate. It says, restrained flavors of plum. So it's not too jammy, not too sweet at all, but it definitely has those plum flavors more than like, I don't know, cherry or strawberry or something. And light herbs. Mostly I get the herbs when I smell it, not so much when I taste it. Um, round palette, absolutely. Elegant tannic structure. The tannins are nice and soft, nothing too harsh. And a long finish. I honestly don't even know what that means. A well-balanced earthy Merlot. That, absolutely. It is very well-balanced, it's easy to drink, and it is quite earthy, much less jammy than a lot of Merlots can be, you know, because usually Merlot is like a crowd-pleasing, easy-drinking sort of a wine, and I really like this one. So my husband said that he liked it, which is good because he's fairly picky, and my father-in-law said that it tasted like it was very high in alcohol. The ABV is actually only 13.5. Well, I mean, 13.5. 0.5 is decent, but mostly where I get the alcohol is, again, in the scent of it. I'm just letting you guys know that was the general consensus. I think it's really good. I would absolutely drink this a lot. We had it with some baked ziti tonight, which I thought paired beautifully. Quite good, not too sweet. I love it. Okay, so this is the Luxana. ABV is 14.5, so relatively high, I would say, but it doesn't have that same alcoholy taste as some of the other ones did. Let me pour myself another glass. Um, again, I am at dinner with my in-laws, so my father-in-law really liked it. So did my husband, actually. It does have that full-bodied, very fruity kind of a flavor. I would say the tannins are pretty strong, but it's it's really nice. It's, it's well-balanced, and, you know, I like it, and everybody at dinner liked it, so, you know. That's all I'm really looking for, right? Okay, so I am going to try this Lupo Ridere. This one is an Italian uh, Vino Rosso. This one is a 92 point gold medal winning wine, let's see, from Southern Italy. This complex wine is a fantastic accompaniment to hearty meals. Pairing with game meat like venison or even a leg of lamb will bring out the fruit characteristics in the wine. The complexity of the wine, red fruits mingling with earthy notes, followed by a balanced and smooth finish, helps make it a versatile choice for almost any meal and it says it should taste like pomegranate, raspberry, and earth. So I'm excited to try this. Um, I've been tasting them at my in-laws um, at dinner, but tonight it's just me. Whoa, pretty uh, earthy nose. <laughs> this actually smells really good. Whoa, it tastes totally different. <laughs> That's actually quite a lot sweeter than I thought it was going to be. Really interesting. You know, that's one of those things that like, when you smell it and then taste it and it tastes differently and then you can like try to smell as you're drinking it and get different flavors out of it. It's fairly sweet, fairly fruity. I'm definitely getting like like the raspberry, pomegranate, almost like a sour, not sour, like a, like a tart fruit, not like strawberries, you know? It's definitely more on the pomegranate, raspberry side of things. Yeah, very um, mineral earth, not like that kind of damp dirt flavor that you'll sometimes get that sounds so gross, but Sometimes, you know, you'll get kind of like a, almost like a mustiness to it or something. This um, tastes more like, I don't know, rocks. If you were to lick some rocks. <laughs> I should not be allowed <laughs> to tell you how wine tastes. I'm gonna keep drinking this one. I might check back if I decide that I changed my mind on this, but so far I think I like it. It's definitely sweeter than I was expecting, but it's not bad at all. And it definitely has a complexity to it that I appreciate, I think, as it, sits out and breathes some more, it will probably end up changing a little bit. So I like this one, I'm excited. Plus I really like the label on this. I'm totally one of those people that buys things for the label. Shiny packaging gets me every time. Anyway, I'm gonna go drink this and uh, perhaps I will be back with more notes. Otherwise, know that I like this one. It gets a thumbs up. Okay, I'm finishing up the Lupo Ridere bottle. This is day three that it's been open and I, I didn't do any like air suctioning out or anything. Yeah, it tastes like day three wine. <laughs> it's not terrible. It's not terrible. I'm definitely going to drink this. This is the last of it. It's good though. You know, I would totally give that one a thumbs up. Okay, today I am drinking La Douleur Excise. 
I don't know, it's a Grenache. A new world style wine from an old world region, a perfect dichotomy for the passionate wine lover. This dark red wine is complex, multi-layered, and opulent with ripe fruit flavors. So I've had about a glass and a half at this point. I definitely think that this wine needs decanting, aerating, just let it sit out for a while because it, it definitely needed to mellow. Also, the ABV on this is 15.7. That is really high. It's a good Grenache. Grenache is typically more of a fruit forward, sweeter, kind of a jammy wine. Typically, not always. This doesn't taste jammy. It tastes fruit forward, complex, a bit earthy. It has a really good nose. I feel like this would be so good with some chocolate right now. So we'll see, I probably won't finish, probably <laughs> won't finish the bottle tonight. <laughs> so I may come back with a, with a recap on this one. Okay, so it's been 24 hours since I opened this bottle and I'm drinking the last of it right now. It's still very alcoholy. Boop. That's the end of that. Isn't this a cute glass? This is um, the new Vino thing. My overall feelings about this wine are that it's good, but I feel like it, it the alcohol is really strong. I think if you're gonna drink this, it really does need to be decanted and like left to sit for a while, just so that it can kind of mellow out a bit. You know, I mean, obviously I finished the whole bottle, so I do like the wine. Note to self, next time, put this in a decanter. <laughs> Okay, another day, another wine. This one is 4 and 20 Cabernet Sauvignon, 2016. I'm thinking because the last wine that I had really would have done well with decanting. So I'm wondering, I might just end up doing that to this one. ABV on this one is 13.9%, which is average. I, ha I did open the bottle a little while ago, so the bottle's been opened. It doesn't taste good. All right, I'm gonna put this one in the decanter and see if it gets any better. Okay, so here's my decanter. I have this lovely little lid too. Um, and then I have this cool thing, which um, it has like a little strainer in case there's any sediment, but then it also has these holes in the bottom to splay it out. Watch, you'll see. And it looks really cool. Right? Okay, let me put this down before I spill it. Our 2016 vintage Cabernet Sauvignon features oaky boysenberry, blackberry, and other juicy dark fruit flavors that will transport you to a late afternoon picking berries near old barns and split wood fences. The soaring aromas will carry you deep into your glass. Okay, that's already a little bit better. I'm gonna let it sit out for a while. Okay, so it's been out for a while. Colin says that he doesn't like it. Um, I feel like it's quite musty. I don't know for sure if it's corked. I don't, I don't know about this one, you guys. Okay, the final bottle from my first leaf box. This one is the Tintoretto Vino Rosso from Italy. And this one is labeled as being a fruit forward, jammy, well, I don't think it actually says jammy, but it does say this wine is rich and full of life with powerful notes of dark fruits, subtly playing off notes of black pepper and just a touch of earthy umami. So I had this tonight with dinner. We had some roasted vegetables, which it actually lists on the back of the bottle as being a good wine pairing. And I thought that it went really well because we had a nice, you know, we had chicken and roasted vegetables and it is, a little on the sweeter side, but it's balanced out nicely with, you know, a little bit of earthiness and you definitely get that black pepper on the nose. Honestly, I feel like with all of this wine tasting, I've gotten better at picking out certain flavors as well as just really enjoying these bottles. My first couple of sips, I was like, meh, it's not that great. But then as the evening went on and it's not like I was chugging the wine, there's still probably more than half a bottle in here. And my father-in-law had a glass as well. I felt like it really opened up as it sat out and the complexity of the flavors started just melding and, and it was a really nice wine. I would say overall of the wines from this box, as they sit out, they definitely get better and no two wines have been the same, which I so appreciate. 
So I really liked this one, you know? I, I didn't think that I would, and after the first sip, I wasn't sure that I did. But as I continued to drink that glass, I really enjoyed it. The flavors develop so nicely over time. It's really interesting. I would say definitely decant these wines, share them with friends, let them sit out. I think it's an easy drinking, crowd-pleasing type of a wine, but it's not a generic, sweet, fruit-forward, ultra-jammy kind of a wine. <laughs> Okay, so you can see that I really enjoyed these wines. There was only one wine that was not good, and I do wonder if that wine was off, and they say that they guarantee it. So basically, if, you, if there is a bottle that you don't like, you tell them, you have to email them, and then they will credit your account for that bottle. So at least they do guarantee their wines that way. But I really thought especially compared to most of the wine clubs that I've tried, that these wines were actually really good. They weren't all the same generic jammy profile. They didn't leave my teeth purple. They were really good, well-balanced, interesting, complex wines. So, I don't, so that was only my first case. I did order my second one, so we'll see if that one lives up to this one. This was an introductory box, so it could be that this is all their good stuff and the rest of it's gonna be the crap, but <laughs> hopefully it'll all be wonderful. One of the other interesting things about this box is that I know they ship to Arkansas. Somebody had asked me, and I just happened to have found this company and they do ship to Arkansas. You know, they of course have limits. They don't ship everywhere, so definitely check that out. Hopefully they will ship to you wherever you are. As far as price-wise, it is based per bottle. So it's not necessarily, you know, $69 a month every month. It changes because your bottles change. And when you swap the bottles, they will show different prices. So depending on what you end up wanting, the price may change, but it is generally $15 to $20 per bottle. But that was for the reds. I don't know if the whites are cheaper, if they're more expensive or less expensive for the sparkling, etc. And they have great introductory deals, which I think is awesome. So honestly, I would say that I'm quite impressed with this. I don't have any sort of affiliation. They don't know that I'm reviewing their wines. However, now that I've ordered a box, I do have a referral code that gets you that three bottle deal and I'm sure it gives me some sort of credit. I can't remember what the credit is, but you know, so if you would like to use my link, I would appreciate it. <laughs> um, as far as other wine companies that I've tried out, the Martha Stewart one, what is it? Wink and Bright Cellars, I was unimpressed with those and quite angry at Martha Stewart's, really. <laughs> if you've seen that review, I was quite irritated. I love weekly tasting, but that one isn't a subscription. That's more of just these wonderful fun packs that you can purchase one off. And then the tasting room wines I thought were really great. I do think that I prefer these wines over those, but they also have a really great introductory thing where you just pay shipping and they send you a sampler pack. I'll link that review in the description box for you guys if you wanna check that one out as well. Overall, I'm super happy. Like I said, I did order a second box and I feel like that's saying a lot for me. So anyway, I will leave all of the information in the description box. Thank you guys so much for watching. I hope you enjoyed it. Please give this video a thumbs up if you did. Tell your friends and I'll see you in my next one. Bye!